ಸ್ಥಾಪಕಾಯಧರ್ಮಸ್ವರ್ಮಸ್ವೇ ಅವತಾರವರಿಷ್ಠಾ ರಾಮಕೃಷ್ಣಾಯಮಃ ನಮಸ್ಕಾರ ಟು ಆಲ್ ಆಫ್ ಯು ವೆಲ್ಕಮ್ ಟು ದ ಸ್ಟಡಿ ಆಫ್ ಸೈನ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ವರ್ಷಿಪ್ ಆರ್ ಸಿಗ್ನಿಫಿಕೆನ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ವರ್ಷಿಪ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಲಾಸ್ಟ್ ಸೆಷನ್ ವಿ ಹ್ಯಾಡ್ ಡಿಸ್ಕಸ್ಡ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ದಿ ಪ್ರಾಣಾಯಾಮ ಲಾಸ್ಟ್ ಟೈಮ್ ವಿ ಹ್ಯಾಡ್ ಡಿಸ್ಕಸ್ಡ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ಪ್ರಾಣಾಯಾಮ ಸೊ ಟುಡೇ ಐ ಜಸ್ಟ್ ವಾಂಟ್ ಟು ಟೇಕ್ ಯು ಥ್ರೂ ಸಮ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿ ಸ್ಪೆಷಲ್ ಫೀಚರ್ಸ್ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ದ ಥಿಯರಿ ಇಫ್ ಯು ನೋ ದ ಥಿಯರಿ ಅ ಲಿಟಲ್ ಬೆಟರ್ i think it will be more interesting because this is a very very important step in spiritual life uh swami vivekananda has given a detailed explanation about this pranayama so if you learn all that scientifically then it might uh bring faith in you to do perform this pranayama so let me take you through that swami vivekananda while discussing in the complete works of his volume 1 especially the raj yoga the first steps page 138 swam vivekananda tells in raj yoga great and authority as the commentator shankaracharya advises about nadi shuddhi which is the preparation for pranayama so before performing pranayama one should do the nadi shuddhi what is this nadi shuddhi purification of the nerves so since the authority as the commentator shankaracharya is advising this nadi shuddhi swami vivekananda thinks i think fit that it should be mentioned and i will quote his own directions that is swami vivekananda is quoting shankaracharya's own direction from his commentary on the shvetashvatara shvetashvatara upanishad now shankaracharya's commentary is being told by swam vivekananda that has been translated into simple english by vivekananda the mind whose dross has been cleared away by pranayama becomes fixed in brahman the mind whose impurity or dross has been cleared away by pranayama becomes fixed in brahman therefore pranayama is declared so these are the things which shankaracharya has told in the commentary on shweta ashvatara upanishad so that means if none other than the great acharya authority on advaita vedanta on our scriptures if he is mentioning that pranayama has to be performed before that we have to do the nadi shuddhi so we have to take note of it the mind who whose dross has been cleared away by pranayama so pranayama will clear away the dross that is impurities of the mind becomes fixed it will help us to concentrate our mind in brahman becomes fixed is brahman in brahman therefore pranayama is declared first the nerves are to be purified so that is nadi shuddhi then comes the power to practice pranayama after performing this nadi shuddhi when you perform, you purify your nerves then comes the power to practice pranayama so how to do this uh, nadi shuddhi it's very very simple anybody can do it there is no danger in doing this nadi shuddhi anybody and everybody can do it only thing pranayama if not performed properly then it may cause some harm too that's why nadi shuddhi has to be done first there is no danger in it and what is how to do this nadi shuddhi swam vivekananda takes us in a simple manner stopping the right nostril with the thumb stopping the right nostril with the thumb i have shown you in the last class how to hold this through the left nostrils fill in the air according to capacity then without any interval don't do the kumbhaka throw the air through the right nostril closing the left left one again inhaling through the right nostril eject through the left
according to capacity. Practicing this three or five times four hours of the day before dawn during midday. So I have to do it three or four times before dawn, during midday and in the evening and at, if possible, let us not worry about mid, midnight. In 15 days or a month, purity of the nerves is attained. Then begins pranayama. So pranayama is to be done according to Shankaracharya. The commentary in Shvetashvata Upanishad, that's why Swam Vivekananda dealt about it. Then we have to know what this pranayama is. So I will take through the notes of, about pranayama by Swam Vivekananda in his uh, talks on Raja Yoga. Every day, I think a little by little, little by little, I will go to the proper subject, that is the puja. But before that, we should also know the theory of pranayama, which is very, very important. As Shakrachari himself has told, it will clear all the dross of the mind and then it will help us to concentrate on Brahman. Now, Swam Vivekananda, in his uh, commentary on Raja Yoga, the first steps, volume 1, page 143, he is telling, Return to, Returning to our subject, we come next to Pranayama, controlling the breath, breathing. What has that to do with concentrating the powers of the mind? How does the pranayama or breathing, controlling the breathing has any connection to do with concentrating the powers of the mind? Breath is like the fly. Swami Vivekananda is giving a wonderful example. Breath is like the fly, wheel of, the, of this mission. You know, in olden days when the missionaries, lot of missionaries were there, there would be this cog wheel, fly wheel and so many other wheels connected to each other and the movement of the wheel here will go to move so many wheels, smaller wheels. So Swami Vivekananda is giving this example in olden day watches too, in the wristwatch too, there would be these wheels. In modern day everything is electronic and now it is digital, so it is going miniature and miniature. So the modern day people may not understand this. So even then I have, I have to give this example given by Swami Vivekananda. Breath is like the fly wheel of this mission, the body. In a big engine you find the fly, fly wheel first moving and that motion is conveyed to finer and finer machinery until the most delicate and finest mechanism in the mission is in motion. The breath is that flywheel supplying and regulating the motive power to everything in this body. So that is how Swam Vivekananda is now taking us through control of prana or breathing. You can control your thought, your mind and concentrating it, the, the mind. So he gives another example. So let us go through that story or example of Swam Vivekananda which will make it clear how breathing exercise or pranayama can control our mind. There was once a minister to a great king. He fell into disgrace. The king, as a punishment, ordered him to be shut up in the top of a very high tower. This was done and the minister was left there to perish. He had a faithful wife, however, who came to the tower at night and called to her husband at the top to know what she could do to help him. The minister told her to return to the tower the following night and bring with her a long rope, some stout twine, pack thread, silken thread, a beetle and a little honey. Wondering much, the good wife obeyed her husband and bought him the desired articles. The husband directed her to attach the silken thread firmly to the beetle, then to smear its horns with a drop of honey and to set it free on the wall of the tower. With its head pointing upwards, so the minister asked him to do this, to set that beetle, tying the silken thread to its waist and uh, smearing some honey to the antenna or the feelers of that worm, that uh, beetle and to set it in the direction of the tower. She obeyed all these instructions and the beetle started on its long journey, 
smelling the honey ahead. It slowly crept onwards in the hope of reaching the honey until at last it reached to top of the tower. When the minister grasped the beetle and got the position of the silken thread, he told his wife to tie the other end to the pack thread. And after it, he had drawn up the pack thread, he repeated the process with the stout twine and lastly with the rope. Then the rest was easy. The minister descended from the tower by means of rope and made his escape. In this body of ours, the breath motion is the silken thread. By laying hold of and learning to control it, we grasp the pack thread of the nerve currents. And from these, the stout twine of thought, our thoughts, and lastly, the rope of prana, controlling which we reach freedom. That's how not only we can control our mind, we can also get freedom, that is liberation. So you can also concentrate on Parabrahman, Samadhi, everything Swami Vivekananda explains in some of the next uh, works by Pranayama, you can get all those things. So that's why it's very, very important to know these things. I am explaining about these things in details. So today, I think this much is enough about Pranayama. Mm, if possible, I, I will try to discuss about these things in the next class. So now we will go to proper pranayama again where we have discussed about the breathing exercise first and then go to the next step that is the Bhuta Shuddhi. I will explain a little about the pranayama which is given the ritual in our puja. So how to do this pranayama? Last time I had given in details all that pictures were there. Holding, I have shown you the posture, the right, this thing here also in the picture it is given. Holding the right forehand and middle finger as in a fist close the right nostril with the right thumb then repeating i'm or om om is better it's very simple everybody note no sit so the ratio followed here for puraka filling in the air inhaling then kumbhaka retaining the breath inside and rechaka exhaling so the ratio should be one is to four is to two so we'll start with the minimum count and that is uh, 4, 16 and 8 the ratio. 4 is Puraka, then 16 is Kumbhaka retaining the breath and 8 is Rechaka exhaling. So with this now count Om 4 times and inhale. So then closing the left nostril with the ring finger and little finger of the right hand repeat the same mantra. Om 16 times. This is known as Kumbhaka. We have done the Puraka. What is that? How did we do the Puraka? Then repeating Om 4 times. Inhale through the left nostril. Keep count on the finger of the left hand. This process is called Puraka. After that we did the Kumbhaka. Then closing the left nostril also. That is both the nostrils. With the ring finger and little finger of the right hand. Repeat the same mantras, Om, for 16 times. This is known as Kumbhaka, retention of the breath in the lungs. Then releasing the right thumb alone, exhale through the right nostril, repeating the mantra as earlier, that is the ratio here to be followed is 8 times. So this is known as Rechaka, that is the exhalation. Repeat the same procedure, that is Puraka, Kumbhaka, Rechaka. Starting with the right nostril, again repeat the procedure once more. Starting from the left nostril in this way on completion of three times. That is Puraka, three times Puraka, three times Kumbhaka, three times Rechaka. So one Pranayama is said to be achieved. So we had discussed about this Pranayama in the last class up till now. So you can do this Pranayama. 10 times or as many times morning and in the evening during the Sandhya Vandana that will help you to concentrate your mind before meditation or before Japa. So all that will be explained by Swami Vivekananda's teachings. I will give you, bring it to you in the next class like that I will go on explaining little by little because there is a lot of theory, there is a lot of materials to be explained. We have to understand it. It is a very important subject. So I will bring up that matter. Mm slowly in the next class. Now we shall go to the next important topic or uh, step that is 
Bhuta Shuddhi. Now we are coming to Bhuta Shuddhi. It is written there. We can see on the screen. B H U T A Bhuta. S H U D D H I Shuddhi. So Bhuta, as I told you earlier, it has three meanings. The lowest meaning is the spirit or the ghosts and other things are all called Bhuta. Then another meaning of the Bhuta is the elements. There are five elements, Akasha, Vayu, Agni, Apa, Prithvi. So these are the five elements from which the whole world or universe is created. So they are called elements, finer elements and the grosser elements. So five elements that is the Bhuta, that is also Bhuta. Another Bhuta, the meaning of the Bhuta is the living beings are also called Bhuta. So then Shuddhi means purification. Here. The meaning of is meaning of this particular term bhuta means purification of the elements of the body. So in the this body also our body is also prepared from the five elements. The whole universe is created by these five elements. If that is so, then our body is also naturally has to be prepared. So purification of these elements is called here bhuta shuddhi. So now before entering into the proper Bhuta Shuddhi, I will take you through a little idea or theory of this Bhuta Shuddhi. What is that? Purification of the element Bhuta Shuddhi. So here it is told this is purification of the body composed of five elements that is earth, water, fire, air and ether. Earth is called Prithvi in Sanskrit, then water is Apaha, fire is Agni, then air is Vayuhu and ether or the original element from which the whole universe is created is called Akasha. So Akasha, Vayu, Agni, Apaha, Prithvi, these are the five elements. By this purification, the five elements get united with the imperishable Brahman. So you can see what is this Bhuta Shuddhi by this purification. The five elements get united with imperishable Brahman. The underlying idea is to see the five elements not as inert substances, but as Brahman or God or consciousness or awareness. So what is the idea? What is the significance of doing this Bhuta Shuddhi? I will read it again. I will tell you again, note it very interestingly or very uh, with a lot of concentration. What is that? The, by this purification, the five elements get united with the imperishable Brahman. That's consciousness. The underlying idea is to see the five elements not as inert substances, but as Brahman, God, Bhagavan or uh, Consciousness, Atman, Paramatman, whatever you may call. The underlying idea is to see the five elements not as inert substances, but as Brahman. So association with Brahman will make it Brahman itself. Whatever you associate with, it will make that particular thing. So there is one more saying of Swami Vivekananda, it's very special. What is that saying of Swami Vivekananda? Swami Vivekananda says that about the association, suppose you have the rain, so rain water comes down. So if you catch it with your hand, which is pure, so what happens? The rain drops from the sky. If it is caught in hands, it is pure enough for drinking. If it falls in a gutter, its value drops so much that it can't be used even for washing the feet. If it falls on hot surface, it perishes. If it falls on the lotus leaf, it shines like a pearl. And finally, if it falls in the oyster, it becomes a pearl. The drop is the same, but its existence and worth, its value, depend on with whom it is associated. 
So always be associated with the Lord. So then your value will increase to the level of Lord himself. So it will become, if you associate with Parabrahma Swarupa or consciousness, the five elements also will become purified because it itself also will become Parabrahma Swarupa or consciousness. So that is the idea. That is the significance of doing this Bhuta Shuddhi. Now come to know what is the significance of Bhuta Shuddhi. So what is the other thing we have to know about this Bhuta Shuddhi? So the underlying idea is to see the five elements not as inert substances but as Brahman or consciousness, awareness. The Upanishad says all this is verily Brahman. What is that Upanishadic statement? Sarvam khalu idam Brahma. Sarvam khalu idam Brahma. All this is verily Brahman. Everything this is Parabrahma Swarupa or God or Bhagavan or consciousness. Bhuta Shuddhi, this process, this uh, which uh, step which we are going to perform, this Bhuta Shuddhi destroys all evil or sinful tendencies, the negative tendencies and produces a new divine body called Sadhana Deha. The body fit for doing spiritual practices, Sadhana Deha. The body fit for spiritual practice. So Bhuta Shuddhi destroys all evil or sinful tendencies and produces a new divine body called Sadhana Deha. So that is the importance or significance of doing Bhuta Shuddhi. We come to know the science or significance behind Bhuta Shuddhi. Now we shall go in detail to see what is the step we have to perform in Bhuta Shuddhi. This is very, very important. It is just like another meditation. Swami Shardhanandaji Maharaj explains about this in Great Master that it is a very, very important step and it will help us to progress in spiritual life. He has given a great detail about this Bhuta Shuddhi in Great Master. So let us see how to perform this Bhuta Shuddhi. What is to be done? Now you can note the steps one by one. Note it. Placing the back of the right palm over the left palm on the lap. Placing the back of the right palm. So this is the right palm. The back is like this. Where should we place it? On the left palm. So you have to place the back of the, this thing like this. So both of them where to place after placing them on the lap. So I have shown you the photo of uh, Lord Buddha placing his hand in that posture. You can see there in the in our screen on the screen there you can see there. So placing the back of the right palm over the left palm on the lap. Imagine that Jivatman. What is this Jivatman? We have heard about Atman, but what is this Jivatman? Individual self residing in the heart like an unflickering flame in a windless place is brought to the Muladhara. Now you can see, you can pictureize it. See in meditation you have to pictureize everything. You can see there on the screen. In that picture you can imagine just like you are that Buddha, Lord Buddha sitting there. You can imagine yourself there. The posture is also stated. I explained how to keep the posture, the hands. Then you have to imagine it's not, it's a reality, but now we have to imagine that in our body, there is a, this, there is this Jivatman, individual soul. How is it residing? Where is it residing? In the heart, like an unflickering flame. See, when you keep the flame, the lamp flame in a place where there is no air, air current, then it will be there, unflickering. So our Atman also is similarly inside our heart. It is stated in Katopanishad. Angushtamatro Purusho Antaratma Hrudeshe Tishtati. So in the form of this Angushta. Angushta means this thumb. The size and the shape of the thumb. Just like that flame. Unflickering flame in a windless place. The Atman is present. So any proof of this? Do you have any thing to prove this other than this? Yeah, I told about Katopanishad. There are it is stated in many other Upanishads. 
I'll just quote it that the Atma Jivatman stays at the place of the heart. Hridi Hyesha Atma. Where is this quoted? In the Vedas, it is in the Prashna Upanishad 3 6, then verse 18. The location of the soul. The Vedas state that the soul resides in the heart. So I gave you the proof first of the Katopanishad, where Katopanishad states Angushtamatro Purusho Antaratma. So then Hridi Hesha Atma from Prashna Upanishad. Then another statement in the Upanishad, Chandogya Upanishad is Sava Esha Atma Hridi. So what is the meaning of that? The word Hridi indicates that the soul is seated in the region of the heart. The word Hridi indicates that the soul, our Jivatman, is seated in the region of the heart. So, we have got the proof from the scriptures, from the Vedas, that it is residing in the heart. And also I told about the Katopanishad of the size of the thumb. And how is it, how is it residing in our heart? Hridi. So it is reciting just like an unflickering flame in the windless place. Because you have to meditate on these things, I am explaining it in detail so that it will be easy for you to meditate on this. So the picture is also given where that unflickering flame, the Atman Jivatman is present in your heart region. So you can imagine that you are in that place of Lord Buddha and that you are Atman or Jivatman is present there, you can imagine that. Unflickering flame in a windless place. Now what have you to do that? Now you have imagined that. Now gradually you have to bring down that flame to the Muladhara Chakra. Now I have to explain about what is Chakra, what is this Muladhara and all other things. Now we will go to the next slide. So what is the next slide? We have to go to the next slide now. Can we move to the next slide? Yeah. Now, you can see all the different chakras. The picture has been given here. You can see all the chakras. Now, you know that you have a backbone. In that backbone, there are so many, that lumbar bone, so many bones are there, arranged one upon the other, inside which we have the, that spinal column. So you can see their picture in that picture, the human body, the center is the spinal column. It goes from the base of the body, the backbone, to the top of the head. So now, the center that now or that inside the backbone whatever you have is called spinal column so what are what are the things that are present there one nerve is running on the left side is ida that nadi or nerve is called ida then on the right side of the backbone is the pingala. So these are the two nerves which are going on either side of this spinal column, the ida on the left side and the pingala on the right side. I am explaining it to you very slowly so that you can easily imagine the picture and you are that ida is on the left side and pingala is on the right side. And center, we have a hollow canal, the spinal canal that is called that hollow canal, just like a pipe, it's hollow, like that. There is a hollow canal in the center in between the Siddha and Pingala nerves. And what is that called? Sushumna Nadi, Sushumna canal or Sushumna Nadi. That is just like a pipe, hollow canal. The center one you can see. So now your heart. The Jivatman at the center of the heart, in the last picture you imagine, 
you have to move that along this spinal cord down to the lowest chakra so now we have to understand what this chakra is the chakras means the literal meaning is wheel but here the chakra is plane of existence plane of your consciousness or plane of your thought the mind level where your mind is the working of the mind where is your mind how is your mind working so plane of consciousness is called chakra so the lowest chakra at the lowest point of the backbone the coccyx it's called mooladhara chakra you can't find it if you go and dissect your backbone and the body you can't find that chakras it is as i told you the plane of consciousness or plane of your existence so now the lowest chakra is called muladhara so we will take you through the other chakras as it comes here in this meditation or in this bhuta shuddhi now the jivatman which was at the center of the heart there the flame unflickering flame just like in a windless place so that jivatman that flame or that atman it's not a flame it is like that so that jivatman has to be taken down where should it be taken down through that spinal column to the muladhara chakra he is brought to the muladhara and we have to merge that in the kundalini so now i will explain muladhara is the lowest chakra and the next chakra is there you can see it is mentioned there after the muladhara chakra is the swadhishthana chakra muladhara is the most lowest point on the backbone the coccyx the bone there is almost triangular that's why in sanskrit it is called as mula shringata so now the next chakra just behind you can imagine just behind the procreative organs or sexual organs at the level of this sexual organs behind near the backbone is the next chakra that is swadhishthana then exactly behind i told you you if you dis uh, bisect or dissect it dissection you can't find them it is plane of existence so i'm just giving all these things to make you imagine those position so now just behind the navel at the point of that column it is the manipura chakra the next thing is manipura now i don't want this slide i just wanted the same old picture the same old that all the chakras i was explaining about the chakra i will ask to move forward only then you can move forward now let let me go to that picture of the chakras the earlier one not the swadhishthan chakra not even the muladhara chakra no you are going forward you should go backward to the the man sitting there with the different ah that is the this thing i want i i was explaining that please don't move forward now yeah now it is the just behind the navel on the backbone that is the spinal cord just behind the navel that chakra is called you can you can see it is given there manipura chakra then again if you go up on the spinal cord at the place of the heart just now we told where the jivatman was residing that chakra is called as anahata chakra above that if you go upwards on the backbone just exactly at the throat point behind the the backbone there is the next chakra that is the vishuddha chakra vishuddha then in between the eyebrows you can see where we always keep this sindur or this mark the whatever in the center of the eyebrows two eyebrows the center here that is the point where you can see the mothers or girls they wear this bindi or we also wear this marks religious marks there is a place where the third eye is so exactly behind on the spinal column that is called the agra chakra then if you go still up 
in that spinal column behind on the backbone on the top this area top is the sahasrara these are the chakras now i'll take you through the names of the chakra from the bottom the lowest chakra is called the muladhara at the lowest end of the backbone it is the muladhara you can pronounce it you can pronounce the name muladhara the next chakra is called the swadhishthana no no i didn't ask to change the slide please i am just explaining about the same slide when i ask you to move the slide you can move it i am just explaining the same slide so you can now chant that name muladhara the lowest chakra then the next chakra is swadhishthana i'm just uh, asking you to learn the pronunciation should not learn the wrong pronunciation can you pronounce that name muladhara that is the basic basic chakra that's why muladhara means adhara mula means original basic basic chakra muladhara then where the kundalini resides that is the place residing place of the divine mother and also that is the residing place that chakra is the residing place of the the lord ganapati ganapati also muladhara sthito se nityam in ganesha tarvishirsha we get the mantra muladhara sthito se nityam then what is the color of the chakra it is red that's why you can see that red color it is indicated by the red color so the next chakra is swadhishthana can you pronounce it swadhishthana so dhi is mahaprana that's why more energy is used swadhishthana so then after that is the next chakra at the nabhi level the navel level that is manipura it is not manipura manipura chakra then the next next chakra at the heart level is anahata chakra anahata anahata chakra so that is the place where our jivatman resides in our heart the heart region that's why we always meditate on god at that region because god resides our ishta devata or atman jivatman resides there so at the neck level it is the vishuddha chakra vishuddha chakra then between the eyebrows behind on the back on the backbone or the spinal column is the agnya chakra agnya chakra then the topmost on the head is the sahasrara just exactly on the back backbone it is all imagined on the backbone the center of the head is sahasrara so i have made you to chant all those chakras i think you have learned the pronunciation now the kundalini or sorry now the place of kundalini is muladhara the jivatman is gradually imagining we have to imagine in this meditation that you are bringing down first you imagine the flame unflickering flame in a windless place the jivatman is like that at the anahata heart region that is to be imagined now you are bringing that down through this sushumna canal lower to the bottom most chakra that is muladhara so that is the muladhara chakra now we shall go to the next slide that is muladhara chakra muladhara yeah this is the slide muladhara chakra please come to that muladhara chakra yeah now the muladhara chakra will be like this the yogis have seen it so that's why because it is seen to them in that meditation the chakra will be like that and even the what are the letters there of the sanskrit alphabets they are also placed there this is muladhara chakra at the bottom most it will be triangular in shape that's why you can see the triangle is given inside that's why it's called mula shungatha so that is the place of divine mother and also that is the place of ganapati and it is red in color you can see many more other details are there the akshara or the letter there of the muladhar chakra is lam you can see lam is also written there in sanskrit lam and you can see there are how many petals there of the lotus the lotus different lotus of different petals are there 1 2 3 4 4 petal lotus is there and on each petal of the four lotus you can see 
the topmost is wa then the side words is sha then below that is murdhanya sha sha wa sha sha then sa so these are the four chakras on our four chakras these are the letters and in the muladhara chakra we have the letter la so i given you description of what is muladhara chakra so that is the place of divine mother the color is red ganesha's also position is that our subconscious mind that is the seat of our subconscious mind all the memories all the things of your last life or many many lives everything every record will be stored here all the information of your last life everything every detail of what you have undergone in this life is stored in this this is the seat of subconscious mind so this is the muladhara chakra plane of existence so we have brought down the jivatman from the heart region to this muladhara chakra and merged that jivatman in the kundalini so here in the kundalini we have the kundalini what is this kundalini in muladhara it is the power it is the energy the divine mother it is the energy kundalini is a type of energy so that kundalini will be residing in this muladhara just like a sleeping serpent can i get the slide of kundalini which is sleeping like a serpent the kundalini picture of the kundalini which is sleeping not the swadhisthana the kundalini picture the like a sleeping serpent okay maybe it is found missing never mind i will just explain so the kundalini is residing the divine mother the energy the force the divine mother is residing here in this muladhara chakra just like a sleeping serpent that's why you can see on the head of all divine mother or gods and goddesses there will be the fully opened hood of the snake and at the back we will see just like a the snake is there so all that is indicative of this kundalini so in the divinities or in the gods and goddesses that kundalini is fully awakened so here now in us ordinary human beings the kundalini or the power the energy divine mother is like residing like a sleeping serpent a sleeping serpent so now we have merged this jivatman from the heart region brought down to this muladhara chakra and we have merged that in kundalini that is what in bhuta shuddhi we have seen so i have explained about what is muladhara chakra then kundalini then awaken the slumbering kundalini through the utterance of the bija mantra hum in the first uh, diagram we had put that mantra hum h o o m is the correct this thing sometimes we put h u m and u v is elongated hum so that is the bija mantra what is this bija mantra used to this bija mantra is used to awaken kundalini so what is the bija mantra which is used to awaken kundalini hum or hum so h o o m is the correct pronunciation or h u elongated u is elongated hum that is the pronunciation that bija mantra is hum so then awaken the slumbering kundalini slumbering means sleeping through the utterance of the bija mantra hum so by repeating that bija mantra hum then this bi- kundalini is to be thought that it is awakened so now you have come to know the energy the divine mother is residing in this kundalini like a sleeping serpent and that can be awakened by the bija mantra hum so we have brought this jivatman from the heart region merged it in the kundalini and we have awakened the kundalini by the repetition of the bija mantra hum so now after 
repeating this bija mantra home and raising or by awakening the slumbering kundalini say ramakrishna used to dance round his disciple singing this song oh mother wake up kundalini muladhara vasini nityananda daini muladhara kamala so who is sleeping in the muladhara kamala like a serpent supta bhujaga rupini muladhara kamala in muladhara kamala like a supta bhujaga supta means sleeping bhujaga means snake rupini so that is the sanskrit words in the muladhara kamala so telling that repeating this song ramakrishna used to go around clapping hands and praying to divine mother around his disciple and that would rouse their kundalini we have seen in the life of many direct disciples of shri ramakrishna so now we are awakening this kundalini slumbering kundalini sleeping kundalini by the repetition here in this puja it is told whom is the bija mantra by which we awaken this kundalini the sleeping serpent the divine mother repeating whom utterance of the bija mantra whom then repeating soham so the soham mantra how to pronounce this soham s o h a m the soham mantra is s o h a m soham so now so is elongated that is two matra two unit of time it is just so it, we don't have so hraswa uh, it is always dirga only so hum so what is how to break up this mantra saha aham that is the breaking up the mantra what is the meaning of saha aham saha means that aham means i am that i am what is that saha saha means parabrahma swarupa god paramatman aham means me jivatman so what is the meaning of the mantra that i am that parabrahma swarupa i am the jivatman that i am is nothing but the parabrahma swarupa that is the meaning of the mantra so by repeating soham so soham will be broken as saha aham meaning that i am so each time you are telling that parabrahma swarupa i am that parabrahma swarupa i am so what where is that that parabrahma swarupa residing it is residing that is paramatma is residing at the sahasrara chakra here guru's position then shiva's position and the parabrahma swarupa turiya chakra sahasrara chakra is here so that's why in the center of the head now when i am repeating saha aham that i am that i am that paramatma swarupa i am that jivatman so what will happen this roused kundalini and that sleeping kundalini which was roused by telling the bija mantra whom and the jivatman now which is merged there will go up will be dragged up in the sushumna canal towards the sahasrara where the paramatman residing why we are re repeating the mantra soham saha aham i am uh, that i am that i am each time i tell saha aham so this kundalini the awakened kundalini and the jivatman merged will go up in the sushumna canal so repeating soham i am he that is that i am raise the kundalini along the along with the jivatman through the sushumna canal by contracting the muladhara so now how to raise it when this you are telling soham what is happening do you know suppose there is a pipe there is some mercury or small water here below some object is there you want to bring it to the top how will you do that something like pipetting but they are pipetting will do it in a different process the suction will be done in a different way but here if it is a plastic pipe or if it is a rubber pipe how do you bring that water which is below at the bottom you squeeze that pipe at the bottom then you bring that water above like this squeezing that. so it so this process of soham when you tell this mantra soham then this muladhara chakra is squeezed to raise this 
Kundalini to bring up this Kundalini and the Jivatman merge to, together towards the upper portion of the Sushumna. So by squeezing this Muladhara, repeating Soham that I am raise the Kundalini along with the Jivatman through the Sushumna canal by contracting the Muladhara. So that contracting process has to be done. You're squeezing it, contracting the Muladhara, the lower part of the Sushumna, the backbone. Now, how are you taking these? How are you taking to the next chakra? This Jivatman and Kundalini, you are taking to the next chakra. What is the next chakra? After Muladhara is Swadhisthana. We can now go, go to the next slide. That is Swa. It's not Vishuddha, it is Swadhisthana. Yeah. Swadhisthana Chakra. This is the Swadhisthana Chakra which comes after Muladhara. So the second chakra, sacral plexus, they are called like sacral plexus. See, the sacral chakra or the second chakra, the plane of existence after Muladhara, next one, as I told you, it is just exactly at the position behind on the backbone of the reproductive organ location. It is given there in the slide it is written. So there are so many features of this basic issues is creativity and other things, reproduction, pleasure, everything is given there. What is the color of this chakra? Orange. What is the mantra of this chakra? Vam. I told you the mantra or the letter, Sanskrit letter of the Muladhara chakra was Lam. Now here it is Vam, V-A-M. Can you pronounce this mantra? Vam, V-A-M. Vam or Vang, that can be that mantra. If balance, you feel creativity, joy, healthy life, prosperity, patience, everything is given there. If unbalanced, what is happened to happen? Guilty, shyness, irresponsible behavior, all the things it is there, allergy, eating disorder, if this is not balanced. So now, when you rise this Kundalini with the Jivatman, to this level, Swadhisthana, then you can balance this chakra. Then from here, so what is the Bija Mantra or what is the mantra of this chakra? It is Vam. What is the mantra of Muladhara? It is Lam. So now this is Vam. Now we have studied, we have come to know about this Swadhisthana chakra. How many petals of lotus? The second chakra in this chakra, Swadhisthana chakra, Swadhisthana lotus. How many petals are there? You can count that. There is a picture that one and so many other things are there. So you can see the letters there. The top one is Bam. Then the next petal is Ma, Bha, Ya, Ra, La. So these are the letters on the petal. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So there in the Muladhara, it was four petals, lotus. Here it is, six petal lotus. On each petal, what is the letter, Sanskrit letter which are given? On the topmost, it is Ba. Then the next on the right side is Ma, then Bha, then Ya, Ra, La. So now you have come to know the details, the six petal. This is the Swadhisthana Chakra, the second chakra, sacral plexus. Then the mantra of that is Vam. Then the color of this chakra is orange. So different other deities will be there. Gods and goddesses may be staying there. As I told you, the place of Ganesha and Shakti Divine Mother is Muladhara. So now we are going. Now we have bought the Kundalini and the Jivatman to the next chakra that is Swadhisthana Chakra. So we are moving to the next chakra now. You have to show the slide of the next chakra after Muladhara it is Swadhisthana. Swadhisthana it is Manipura. The next chakra, Manipura chakra. So now we will go to the next chakra. What are we doing in the meditation? We are moving the Jivatman with the roused Kundalini merged together. We are bringing up, squeezing or con constricting the Muladhara. We have bought it by telling how did we raise it, rouse it by whom, the Bija Mantra whom. Then by telling Soham, Soham with that mantra, that, that is the meaning is that I am that Paramatman or Parabrahman, I am the Jivatman, 
so you are telling that you are bringing up that now you have come to, up to the level of next chakra that is just behind the navel on the in the that is sushumna canal the backbone merudanda so that is the manipura chakra this is the next third chakra the third solar plexus or sacral plexus so the third chakra it is given there the slide is given that all the details are there you can count how many petals are there and also on each petal there are different letters of sanskrit but now we'll go to the next thing what is the basic issues here power self esteem and strength this chakra when the mind is raised to this chakra and meditated on that you get all these things power self esteem and strength what is the color of this chakra what is the how to pronounce this chakra it is manipura chakra manipura chakra this is the third chakra on the backbone exactly behind the navel so nabhi so it is called can you pronounce it manipura chakra manipura chakra the color is yellow and what is the mantra the bija mantra of this chakra it is the agni bija mantra fire so agni deva recites here the fire bija mantra is here and how to pronounce it the agni bija mantra it is given there in english it is not ram it is ram or rang the sound nasal sound it should stay in the no nose or it can be coming up to ma ram or rang so that is the bija mantra rang the color is yellow then if balanced when you bring that and concentrate and uh, bring that kundalini to this what happens how it will be balanced you will become energetic strong confident strong will mental balance health confidence active so if you concentrate on this chakra manipura all these things will happen if it is not balanced then all the problems will be there now you have raised your kundalini from the muladhara with the jivatman by repeating the you have roused the kundalini by telling whom then you are bringing it up by telling so hum that i am now you have come up to the chakra manipura so if imbalance what is going to happen all those things are there i am not concentrating on that now we have brought it to this level that is manipura chakra so you can count how many petals are there the letter given there the sanskrit letter given there you can see it is there on that on the petals now we shall go to see how many petals are there it is 10 petals first was the muladhara was the four petal chakra and the swadhisthana six petal chakra now we are in the manipura the manipura is the 10 petal and the letters are also there dh n t th d dh n p f all those letters are there you can see on the chakra on the petals of the chakra the mantra bija mantra of this chakra is ram okay now we have bought the kundalini and the jivatman telling soham up to this level so this chakra is balanced now we are going to the next chakra after the manipura so at the heart region it is the anahata chakra please move the slide to the next chakra that is anahata chakra manipura is over we are taking our kundalini and the jivatman to the anahata chakra you should note that first the ana the jivatman was residing in this chakra only at this region the heart region so this is anahata chakra the heart region you can see there are so many petals and also the letters on the petals are also there different letters on the petals so the earlier manipura chakra there were 10 petals now how many petals are there in this chakra it is 12 petaled it is 12 petaled so here the number of petals in this lotus is 12 and the letters are also written there now we shall go to see what is the color of this chakra location of this chakra with the 12 petals the name of the chakra is anahata chakra can you please pronounce it anahata chakra 
at the heart region is called anahata chakra anahata this is the fourth chakra heart chakra then where is the location center of the heart so the devotion love emotion this is the place of the basic issue the place of love devotion acceptance compassion everything this is the place the nature the character of a human being all these character qualities will be here devotion love affection acceptance compassion and what is the color of this chakra it is green in color muladhara was red then it was orange then the next was yellow now it is green this anahata chakra is green in color and what is the mantra of this chakra the mantra of this chakra is yam y a m can be pronounced as yam also but in sanskrit it is very easy in english there is confusion so it's not yam it is yam or yang it has to be the pronunciation the uh, the nasal thing has to stand there in the nose so it is yang or yam so if you balance you feel the devotional aspect loving empathetic open hearted serenity emotionally balanced trustfulness tolerance if this chakra is balanced all this quality will come to you if unbalanced what are the things there it is given there on the screen you can read it so as i told you in this anahata chakra there are 12 petals the lotus is having 12 petals so the letter you can see there the letter are given what are the letter l kh kh g gh ng ch ch j j ny ta tha so these are the letter it starts with ta on the top tha then ka kha ga gha na cha cha ja cha nya ta tha so these are the letter on the petals so these are all the the consonants in the letter sanskrit letters all those letters are there on the petals why am i telling about all the letters is when you are doing the special puja vishesha puja then you have to do the consecration nyasa of all these letters which are the representative of divine mother matruka varnas of different deities on all these petals by telling the mantra we have to do the nyasa consecration that's why i'm taking you through the all these petals and also the alphabets they are matruka varnas we are taking through that so now this is the anahata chakra this is the seat where earlier we you saw that jivatman was present there always your atman or god or ishta devata will be present here in this chakra so what is the color it is green in color then what is the mantra yam or yang is the mantra bija mantra now we have bought this kundalini merged with our jivatman to this level so we will now take up the kundalini and other things to the next chakra in the next class because we have already completed our time it's already more than 7 o'clock so we will stop our discussion of this bhut shuddhi for today it is enough so we can conclude the session of this puja discussion of the bhut shuddhi with the mantra om purnamada purnamidam purnat purnamudachyate पूर्णस्य पूर्णमादाय पूर्णमेवावशिष्य ओं शाति 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 हरि ओं तत्सत्मस्तु थैंक यू नमस्कार